time now to roll on. Get it? Roll on. <laughs> With the Alabama Crimson Tide as we continue my 2015 college football previews. Now, when it comes to 10, and we're not talking about the Bo Derek Dudley Moore movie from a generation ago or two generations ago. Uh, when it comes to 10, talking about number of national championships in Bama, yeah, 10 national titles, both AP as well as coaches poll. That's two more than Notre Dame, three more than my Sooners and the USC Trojans, and at least four more than everybody else. No doubt when Bama takes the field, it's an event because very few teams can match their fan base, their aura, their history, their tradition. And Nick Saban has done a great job over the years in keeping that going. Four national championships for Saban, three with Bama, and two this decade. And believe me, they get more than their fair share of All-American five-star type um, high school players in order to plug in anytime you know they suffer graduation losses and also two early departures to the NFL. It seems to be a regular for the Crimson Tide that just shows you how great they've been. Even when they don't win a national championship, um, which they have in the past two years, they at least are in the conversation. Last year's Crimson Tide team went 12-2, and two, got to the semifinals before losing to eventual champ Ohio State and another SEC championship for Nick Saban and the Tide. But this year, in order to repeat as SEC champions and to get back into the college football playoff, a lot of key players have to be replaced on the offensive side. And they only returned three full-time starters on offense. I mean, th that's it. Um, so a lot of the faces that you're going to be seeing are players that either didn't play a whole lot last year or they're going to be uh, fairly new because, um, you know, they lost some quality seniors, but they also, too, um, you know, they lost some early entries. Um, you know, for example, uh, T.J. Yeldon as well as Amari Cooper, uh, both you know, leaving after their junior year. Can't blame them because they're more than ready for the NFL. But let's talk about quarterback first and uh, Jake Coker, who last season was beat out for the starting uh, QB position job by Blake Sims. And Sims actually over achieved, um, you know, leading the SEC in passing efficiency. You know, Sims leading Alabama to a uh, SEC title. And uh, Coker last season in limited time only threw for 59 um, attempts and completed 38 of them. So like I said, his time was limited. He appears to be the number one guy, but if not, David Cornwell, who redshirted last year, uh, figures to be the guy. And I believe he'll get some snaps uh, this year no matter what. Cornwell, that's a familiar name in, in these parts of the Oklahoma City metro area because at one point he was a Norman North High School Timberwolf. So that's a little irony right there for him. As we mentioned earlier, uh, running back position, T.J. Yeldon is going to be missed. Okay, All-American, again, an early entry to the NFL. Derrick Henry was kind of that number two guy, you know, used on drives to give, um, you know, um, to give Yeldon a breather. And while Yeldon was way over 1,000 yards, Henry came close to 1,000 yards himself. And he was more of the physical back. As a matter of fact, you know, just like Yeldon, you know, Henry was capable of taking any handoff or pitch and capable of taking it all the way for a touchdown, as my Sooners found out in the Sugar Bowl a couple of years ago. And that was when Henry was a freshman. Now Henry, his junior year. Hopes to again excel. Kenyon Drake, a senior, looks to get some playing time in the backfield as well. The receivers, yeah, it's not just the fact that you lose Cooper that should be a concern. Uh, DeAndre White, um, who returned kicks but was also a wideout and had a nice game against Missouri in the SEC championship game. You lose him and also Christian Jones, a uh, kick returner who also um, was a listed receiver. So you have at least three valuable wide receiving pieces uh, not there anymore in Tuscaloosa. So get ready for the next generation. At least that's what the Crimson Tide fans are hoping, that uh, Robert Foster and Chris Black can live up to their building. They were both high school All-Americans, and Foster is just a sophomore, and you'll have um, our Darius Stewart, just a sophomore as well, into the mix. Calvin Ripley is believed to be their top recruit from this past season's class, and highly unlikely they'll redshirt him. He should see action as a freshman. O.J. Howard, um, who played some last year at tied in, figures to be the starter this time around as a junior. Only two down linemen return, but it is high quality. We're talking about for the tie. Your return, Cam Robinson, who absolutely shined as a freshman. At left tackle, you'll have him. Um, he's probably the best tackle, in my opinion, in the SEC. And you'll have the center, Ryan Kelly, third year starting. And he is a senior. Again, you'll have him at center. But the other three positions, you have to replace. Last season, Lane Kiffin's offense um, did quite well. 484 yards per game. That was 17th in the country. And again, the key is going to be them continuing to run the ball extremely well. If they can't, and if anything should happen to Derrick Henry injury-wise, 
then that puts a ton of pressure on Coker or Corn well, whoever the quarterback is. And again, because I think that even though they have the capability, there's not that experience there at wideout. Defenses might prepare against Alabama differently than before. So that running game must, again, continue to average about 200 per game or somewhere close. That was a big reason why Bama averaged about uh, 37 points per game a year ago. Defensively, not as many concerns, especially the front six or front seven, depending on the alignment. They'll go a three-down lineman, the tide will, and this is probably the best defensive line in college football. Jonathan Allen, you have him back. Six sacks last year. Also up front, Jaron Reed. Remember the game against LSU last year? 15 tackles, a game that LSU probably felt they should have won, but Bama – um, came back and won that game, and, and, you know, Reed had a big night, 15 tackles, like I said, in that overtime win for the Tide. He returns along with A. Sean Robinson, could very well be um, All-American for 2015. He's just a junior, could be his final year. He could bow for the NFL as well. He's that good. Linebackers return two of three, including the uh, weak side linebacker, that's Reggie Raglan, 95 tackles a year ago, entering his senior year. And Denzel Duvall, also a senior, you'll have him at a linebacker. Middle linebacker. Reuben Foster, just a junior. Again, I think they're front six or front seven, depending on what they go with. If they go with five DBs, of course, six up front. Bama, again, defensively, should be solid um, in that regard. Last year, number four in the country in rush D, and total D was 12th in the country, 328 yards per game is all they allowed. Outstanding. Scoring D, by the way, only 18 points a game they sacrificed. Where well, you have to cross your fingers if you're the Tide, even though last year they were so good defensively, Kirby Smart's D was. The secondary was just mediocre, in my opinion. And that's hard to believe, considering it's Alabama. Despite the fact that Landon Collins was outstanding. Of course, he left early for the NFL as well. They still were just mediocre. Only 58th in the country in passing D. And they gave up a lot of plays of at least 20 yards or more, which is not very Alabama-like. But you do return two pieces of that uh, secondary. That's Cyrus Jones, who had three picks a year ago. And Eddie Jackson at the strong safety, just a junior. So for Alabama, secondary play is going to be so essential because, again, you're going to be going against terrific offenses in the SEC. You know, Texas A&M, Auburn, you know, they play Georgia instead of Kentucky this year out of the East. That's a bad break on the schedule. And, you know, Georgia will be packing it on um, offense as well. And, you know, you go against Mississippi State uh, with Dak Prescott, who might be the best uh, QB in the conference. So Bama, even though their front six or front seven looks intact, secondary, questionable at best. And special teams, no problem here as far as the punter. J.K. Scott led the SEC in punting average, 48 yards per boot as a freshman. And Adam Griffith Jr. started strong last year at kicker, but struggled down the stretch. He went 12 of 19 overall. So really what special teams as far as place kicking. It really hurt them two years ago. So Adam Griffin needs a, uh, Griffin needs a strong start, just like he had last year, but a strong finish, which he did not have last year. You can see the schedule for the Crimson Tide. It is the toughest in college football by far, make no mistake about it, you open the season in Arlington, Texas against Big Ten Power at Wisconsin. This could be a low-scoring game because, you know, Wisconsin has some questions on offense, but their defense looks pretty good, just like Alabama's. If you look on down the list um, at Alabama's schedule, Georgia, the Bulldogs, probably the best team in the SEC East and figures to be a national championship contender. You got to go between the hedges in Athens in early October. Got to go to A&M as well to play that high-powered offense of Kevin Sumlin's. That should be a tough game in College Station. And they do get some tough games at home, however. Arkansas and Tennessee in October both have to come to Tuscaloosa. And then you see November, LSU has to also come to Alabama as well. And at the end of the season, returning to Jordan-Hare Stadium, last time they were there, of course, one of the greatest college football games ever, won by Auburn at the end. And last year, though, in, Al in, um, in Tuscaloosa, it was Bama getting their revenge in a game in which both teams combined for 99 points. We'll see what happens this time around. My final thoughts on Alabama, it's going to be a double-digit winning season for them. Their defense is too good, and I think that uh, Henry is going to have a very good year at running back if he can stay healthy. Biggest questions I have is going to be at quarterback play because I think uh, Blake Sims' loss is going to be bigger than what people might think. And, of course, the wideouts, the prediction they got last year, a lot of that is not back. So the playmakers, other than Henry, to me it's unproven if those guys – the new crop can come through, and the secondary still makes me a little bit weary, and place kicking does too. It's too tough of a schedule for Bama to go 12-0. and 0. I think they fall just short of getting to the national championship. Wouldn't be the first time they'd be wrong about a prediction, so Bama fans, if you're going to call me a dumb Oklahoma hick, you know, that's your constitutional right. But just considering all they lost on offense, again, only three full-time starters back, 
I'm going to be realistic and say Bama goes 10-2, and, and I say they finish second in the SEC West. 